somebody wrap their arms and say, we'll ride this thing out. We'll walk through this thing together. Hallelujah. So I want you to know, single folk, you got a little old pastor that's trying to send up some extra prayers that the Holy Ghost will gird you, that the Spirit of the Lord will wrap his arms around you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That, that, old, that old enemy, that adversary, won't bring in old spirit of loneliness against you and tell you you're alone and you're forsaken and you're forgotten and you're not going to make it. The devil is a liar. If God be for you, who can be against you? I believe he that started a good work and you can perform it and finish it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What do we look for in a spouse? How do they treat Jesus? Do they build their life around him? Or do they fit him in? Do, do they put their life around Him? Do they build it around Him? Or do they just try to fit Him in? How, how, how do they do? How, how do they do it? Do they put Him first? Do they seek Him? Do they love Him? Oh God. Do you want one who puts you first? Or just takes you for granted? Just takes you for granted? Watch their life. There's just little things hinder them from church. Just, 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 just nothing. Keep them away from the one they love the most. He says, she says, I love him more than anything. But just little old tiny stuff will keep them from praying, reading their Bible, seeking the Lord, loving the Lord. If we love him most and we don't take time for him, how will we treat the ones we love second most? Hallelujah. Abraham left all to follow him and he became his friend. You need more than just a lover. You need a best friend. Amen. You, you need a best friend. You need a best friend. This is the one reason I push a little longer courtship. You, you, you need, you need, you're not always, and we got, we got young folk in here, I'm going to preach careful, but I pray too hard of this. I want to preach today. You're not going to be in bed the rest of your life. You're going to be sitting around sick tables. You're going to be juggling bills. You're going to be trying to scrounge money to buy groceries. You're going to have to come up with car payments and house payments and light bills and phone bills and insurance payments. And you need somebody that when the numbers don't latch up, that won't get mad and angry at you, but that'll love you and support you and stand with you. Hallelujah. Hall hundreds of times I've thanked Sheila. Hundreds of times in the early part of our ministry, our bills would be that month 600, 700, 800. I'd have $20. Not one time did Sheila ever get in my face and say, you're a loser and you're a failure. If you was a good husband, I wouldn't have him to be eat Oscar Mayer hot dogs today. I could have a steak. Not one time. And I have thanked Sheila over and over and I have thanked the Lord over and over. And I also have thanked Sheila, there's some time, and I don't know how to preach this, but there's some time, and I never did like this saying, the straw that broke the camel's back, but there's some time when your load's so heavy, the wrong word could break your heart, but the right word could comfort you and help you. You will learn, you will learn. They can curse you at the gas pump, neighbors can curse you, family and friends can turn on you, but nobody has power over your spirit like your spouse. They can build you to the highest or they can tear you down to the lowest. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm preaching some stuff it's not easy to preach I, I, wish, I wish we could have a 30 weddings in here next week and everybody could live happy ever after but the fact is if you don't get the right spouse I'd rather bury you 40 years down the road never married than you live in hell the rest of your life hallelujah hallelujah there is some things worse than being lonely there is some things worse than waking up every morning by yourself I'd rather wake up by myself as wake up with, with a wife that didn't love me and a wife that's bitter at me and a wife that hates me. I wish somebody would help me preach in this house. I wish we're in a Pentecostal church. I wish somebody would magnify the Lord. I wish somebody would bless the Lord. And I read my highest some young person. Quit letting the devil beat you up. God ain't remembered everybody but you and forgot you. The devil's a liar. Sometimes God's working stuff we don't see and stuff we don't understand. But every thought God has towards you is good. Every thought God has towards you is to build you up, to edify you. God's not trying to crush you or forget you or throw you away. God has a plan for you and it's good. But before we fulfill that plan for others, we got to seek first the kingdom of heaven and all his righteousness. And then all these other things will be added. I preached a message like this about five years ago. 
And right after church, I got a phone call. Lost a friend on a Tuesday night. And just because church is over, and I'm probably in the bedroom crying or something. And uh, John and Micah knew something was going on. And they didn't, Mike didn't know if I'd had a hard time with the service or what. And I preached on marriages and courtship and things. And it's three or four years ago. Micah wouldn't hear his here then. He came in the bedroom. My little boys was good to me. And he put his arm around me. He said, Daddy, we had such a good service. Daddy, you preached so good. Didn't help me none. I didn't need it, Daddy. But you sure preach good, Micah. This is for you. <laughs> Give Micah a hand clap. Hey, Amen. John, this is for you. Turn around and tell somebody, this is for you. Paul was totally committed. He let Jesus change his name. Do you want somebody that won't let Jesus change them? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you want somebody? Let's just preach. Do you want somebody that wants to sleep with Jesus but not give their self to Jesus? They want to come to church, shout and sing and prophesy and dance and go out there and be married to strange lovers. They won't treat you no better than they treat Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I'm dying preaching this, but I got a word from the Lord. I got a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. Life's too short, friend. There's some things you better hear from God about. Well, I'm so lonely, I'll settle for anybody. No, 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 no. Wait on the one that God has for you. He that leaves a choice with him, God will give the best. 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 God, you don't have to move. You don't have to lift a finger. I wish somebody begin to cry out, God, don't let me settle for just anybody. I'm telling you, if we're as close to the end of time as I think we are, we're going to have to fight hell like never before. You don't need somebody you have to carry 24 hours a day. You need somebody to carry you every once in a while. You need somebody to strengthen you every once in a while. You need somebody to fight hell for you and stand in the gap for you and make up the hedge for you. Remember, marriage is for rich or poor. It's for health and sickness. David loved God fighting lions and bears in the wilderness and he can love him on the throne. When he lived in dens and caves and never knew where the next meal was, David loved God. John 6, 66. And from that time, many disciples went back and they walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will you also go away? Will you also go away? Will you also go away? I not only passed miracle to, pastor miracle deliverance tabernacle, I've been like a senior evangelist over the, the country and we've got friends all over the nation and Sheila and I have literally gotten our car at 2 o'clock in the morning or 1 o'clock in the morning more than once and we've drove out of state and went to a little man or a woman where, where a husband or wife had walked away and said, I don't love you no more. I don't want you no more. And I don't want to be around you no more. And we went and begged them, please, please don't take Take this overdose. Please give me that gun. Please don't run your car over a hill. Please, please, please. One of the, one of the saddest, and I'm just going to preach my heart out today. One of the saddest phone calls I've, I got in my life was a friend. I'd stayed in her home and I knew there was problems and I tried to work with them and I talked to them and we'd write back and forth and we'd visit back and forth and we'd talk back and forth. And it just wasn't one time and it just wasn't two times and it just wasn't three times and it just wasn't a dozen times and, and I know we all got to have a lot of mercy but this, this, she just wouldn't love her husband she'd just go away over and over and over and, and, and to return to church and go away and get somebody and ret- over and over and over and he called her one morning and found her in a hotel with a, another man and he said you've hurt me too many times I can't handle it no more I'm going to hurt you and I don't know if this was a good man I don't know what happened I don't know if his nerves broke if he lost his mind I don't know what happened but he went and got a rifle and took a little girl that had played with our little boys his little daughter at that time about six years old and shot and murdered his little girl and set the house on fire and took his own life hallelujah 
because of pain. He couldn't handle it no more. And I'm begging you, I'm begging you, there's some things worse than being lonely. Hallelujah, I know I'm preaching hard, but I'm preaching today. I'm from Riposta High. Would somebody worship God in this place? Hallelujah, why are you preaching like this? I'm trying to tell you, you the devil's got you in a spirit of rage and despair. You think you're alone and it's the worst thing and you can't even see no, no light at the end of the tunnel. But I'm telling you, this could be a good season of your life. If you'd wait on God, this could be a good season in your life. This could be a good season in your life. You don't need somebody that's going to leave you. This is some of the chapters in my life I can't ever write. My friends I've held. And their brokenness. Their hurt and their pain till death do us part. This ain't gonna preach good. I'm already in trouble. Watch how they treat their money. If, if Jesus is number one, and if they love him more than anything in the world, and they won't pay their tithes, you ain't gonna get dime. This is a true story of this back in the 60s, a little old friend of mine. I mean, I mean Sheila, I, I try and she, uh, I believe in the husband being head of the home, but not putting his foot on his wife, loving her, walking arm in arm with her. And Sheila and I, we got some unwritten rules. I don't think either of us ever spend over $100 with that. We just talk to it with the other. We're family. It's not mine, it's not hers, it's ours. God's, but we're one. We're one. In some houses, husbands or finances, he's got a heart burdened toward it. In some houses, the wife says, that's good if they work together, if they have a heart together. But back in the 60s, a little preacher said he's preaching in a town in another state, and back then you get a Coke for a dime or something, and Little husband worked, little wife stayed at home. She took care of all the money. He said, he said, Brian, he said, I'm leaning against the sidewalk. And he said, they walked by, they didn't see me. He's about three or four feet behind her. And he said, he said, baby, I want a dime for a coat. She turned around and said, you can't have no dime. We got no dime to spare. And he said, I fought him a little ways. And he said, what do you think? I'll make you think. No, give me no dime. I won't make you think. He said, just low enough for her not to hear, but he could hear. And friend, if, if they won't give the Lord a dime, you're not going to get a nickel. They'll whine, dine you while you're court, and they'll forget you. I'm preaching now. I'm, I'm, pre I'm looking at the floor. But, but the Bible, the Bible, where have you robbed me? Where have you robbed me? You've robbed me with your tithes and with your offerings. You, you, did, did, did they, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed you? In tithes and in offerings. Sir, if she won't pay her tithes, if she won't give an offering to the work of God or to help somebody, you will never get a cake on your birthday. <laughs> There'll be a piece of coal in your birthday present. Paying tithes is obedience to the one that they love most or do they love their money more? Why are you preaching this? They did a big survey. Divorces were not more over sex. It was not more over in-laws or outlaws. It was not more over jobs. It was more over money than any other thing. So you, you just better. Well, I'm so lonely, I'll settle for everything. You will now, but will you say that five years down the road? Will you say that ten years down the road? Will you say that twenty years down the road? They don't give no Jesus. They won't support Jesus. They don't care for His Word. They'll never care about your needs. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you.